this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I'm Bishop William Byrne inviting you to radiate the light of Christ by making a gift to the annual Catholic Appeal. The ministries and agencies supported with your generosity help thousands of our neighbors throughout Western Massachusetts. The annual Catholic Appeal unites us in the mission to help meet the physical, spiritual, and sacramental needs of our brothers and sisters and to grow our church. Please donate to the annual Catholic Appeal. Join me in radiating the light of Christ and be a force for hope and love in the world on behalf of the people we serve. Thank you. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good morning and welcome to the Child of Salvation, coming to you from the Holy Spirit Chapel here at St. Michael's Cathedral. I'm your Child of host, Passionist, Brother Chairman Scanlon. Thank you for joining us today at this earlier hour. This weekend, we come together to celebrate the solemnity of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ. We're conscious of the fact that Jesus gave us his body and blood to sustain us and nourish us as we continue to carry out his mission. He is the living bread that has come down from heaven, the bread that is the flesh he gave for the life of the world, the bread that leads us all to eternal life. Let us give thanks to God for this unique and priceless gift of the Eucharist. And here with us today to celebrate the solemnity is Father Gary Daly, director of the Newman Catholic Center at UMass Amherst and administrator of St. Bridget's Parish in Amherst. Father Gary will be offering this Mass in loving memory of Angelina and John Ofta Sr. on their 25th anniversary. This Mass has been requested by their son John. And we are honored to have with us in the Holy Spirit Chapel members of the Loftus family. Also joining us as our music minister is Ernest Hadley of St. Rose de Lima Parish Community, and we welcome one and all. As we celebrate our Mass today, we send out our best wishes to those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. We send happy birthday wishes to two loyal Chalice viewers. Happy birthday to Jean O'Connor as she celebrates her 90th birthday this week. And happy 80th birthday to Elaine Mosen. May you enjoy God's blessings this day. And we also want to wish Bishop Emeritus, Bishop Timothy McDonald, a very happy anniversary as he marks his 60th year of priestly ministry this month. Congratulations as well to the rector of St. Michael's Cathedral, Monsignor Christopher Conley, and his classmates, Father Jack Schaefer and Chris Malatesta, as they mark their 30th anniversary of their ordination. We are also grateful for the ministers of these great priests. We wish them many more happy years ahead. And friends, as we do each week, we remember in our prayers all those of you who are ill or homebound, especially our viewers who are watching this broadcast from your hospital rooms, nursing homes, and extended care facilities. Please know that we welcome your spiritual presence in our chapel this very day. And we also remember the names that have been sent into us for today's Book of Remembrance, including in our listing this week a sister of province, Priscilla St. Pierre, who passed away on May 31st in the 67th year of her religious life. Sister Priscilla worked in all the corners of the diocese from Adams to West Springfield in the many medical facilities run by the Sisters of Providence. Following her retirement, she was the assistant sacristan at Providence Place in Holyoke. 
Sister Priscilla was laid to rest on June the 5th. May her soul and all the souls of the faithful departed rest in the peace of our risen Lord. We now turn to our music minister, Ernie Hadley, and for our opening hymn of gathering, as we greet our celebrant, Father Gary Daly, and together celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. We gather together today to celebrate this great solemnity of the most body, holy body and blood of Christ, traditionally known as Corpus Christi. It's a very beautiful and significant feast that we celebrate because it's the fundamental truth of the church and what we teach that Jesus is truly present body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. So let us begin now this Holy Mass by recalling our sins so that we may worship together these sacred mysteries worthily. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you. We adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy, have mercy. 
mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, the Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord, your God, has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, his parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Lord Jerusalem, Alleluia. Praise the Lord Jerusalem, Alleluia. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem, praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Alleluia. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord Jerusalem, Alleluia. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the angels' food is given to the pilgrim who has striven. See the children's bread from heaven, which on dogs may not be spent. Truth the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac bound. A victim willing, Paschal lamb, its lifeblood spilling, manna to the Father sent. Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. Jesu, of your love, befriend us. You refresh us, you defend us. Your eternal goodness send us in the land of life to see. You who all things can and know, who on earth such food bestow, grant us with your saints the lowest where the heavenly feast you show. Fellow heirs and guests to be, ah, be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread 
will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today as we celebrate Corpus Christi, the National Eucharistic Revival established by the U.S. bishops is moving into its second phase, which focuses on the parish. It's a time to ask ourselves whether we proclaim everywhere, especially in our homes, in our streets, in our parishes, in our world, the great gift of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist with grateful love as an inexhaustible source of blessings. We're called to grow in Eucharistic amazement against every tendency to take this great gift for granted and make it routine. The fathers of the Second Vatican Council called the Eucharist the source and the summit of the Christian life, which means that Jesus in the Eucharist needs to be the reality from which everything in our life flows and the reality toward which everything in our life is directed. The Eucharist is the great test of our faith in and love for God. In the first reading, God through Moses clearly told the Israelites that he was testing them during their 40 years in the desert in order to humble them testing them to know what was in their heart, whether or not they would keep his commandments. He wanted to test whether they would trust in him, who could have make manna fall from heaven and have water flow from a rock. The same God provides an even greater test for us in the Eucharist. He gives us the Eucharist to humble us, test us, and in the end, do us good. So often we try to worship God on our own terms. God wants us to worship him on his terms. We see this Eucharistic test in today's gospel. Jesus tells us very clearly that he is the true manna come down from heaven. He says that unless we eat his flesh and drink his blood, we have no life within us. But if we did feast on his body and blood, we will abide in him and he in us. It was a great test of faith and love. How did people respond? First, many of the Jews asked, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? It made a Jew ritually impure even to touch blood. And Jesus was asking them to drink blood. They thought Jesus was a madman, and they refused to believe. They weren't humble enough to accept what God was asking of them. They failed the test. The second group of people were the majority of the disciples. Jesus had worked so hard over two years trying to preach to them the gospel and help them to live it. And St. John tells us what their reaction was. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? Now, there's no question that the teaching was difficult. But they weren't willing to overcome that difficulty by working and praying to grow in faith with all that they had heard and seen over the past two years. They still didn't believe. They thought Jesus was some type of sick cannibal. The result... Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. They, too, failed the test. The third group was the twelve. Jesus turned to them and asked, do you also wish to go away? They didn't understand any better how they would eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood until exactly one year later, during the Passover in the upper room when Jesus would take bread and wine, change it into his body and blood, and give it to them to eat. But Simon Peter had true faith and showed us what that faith is all about. He stood up and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. They believed in Jesus and therefore believed in what he said and did. 
If he said that they would have to eat his flesh and drink his blood, they would do it because Jesus is truth incarnate and he cannot lie. They passed and they continued to pass. But among their number, there was one who not only would, not, would flunk that test, but kill the test giver. He remained but didn't believe. St. John tells us that it was then in Capernaum that Christ realized that Judas didn't believe and that he would betray him. Judas started his betrayal of Christ because he really didn't believe in what Christ was saying about the Eucharist. It's no surprise that he fulfilled his betrayal during the celebration of the first Mass one year later when he left Mass early to go out and betray the Word made flesh. Judas remained present in body, but he didn't believe. So we see that when Jesus presented the Eucharist as a test during his own lifetime, only a few passed. The Jewish crowds failed the test. Many of his disciples failed. Judas failed. Jesus continues to give us the same test today. The question for each of us is, are we passing that same test? Do we really believe that Jesus is present in the Eucharist? That unless we eat his flesh and drink his blood, we have no life within us? Do we base our whole lives and choices on this awesome reality? Do we respond with love to what we believe in faith? One of the great American defenders of the faith, Peter Kreeft, teaches philosophy at Boston College. And after one of his classes, a devout Muslim student came to him to ask a question on a topic unrelated to the philosophical lecture he had just given. In knowing that Dr. Kreeft had a reputation for being a famous Christian writer, do Catholics really believe that that little white thing they receive is actually not bread, but Jesus? Yes, Peter Kreef replied. And you believe that Jesus is actually God? The Muslim student asked. Yes, we do. And Professor Kreef began to launch into a defense of how God, who created the heavens and the earth, the seas and all they contain from nothing, could easily change bread and wine into flesh and blood, and even to the body, blood, soul, and divinity of God. But the Muslim student interrupted him. He said, I don't have any doubts about Allah's omnipotence. That's not my issue. Well, what is then, Professor Kreeft asked. The Muslim told him that out of curiosity, he had gone to a Catholic mass on the campus of BC, sat in the back, and observed what the Catholics did and how they behaved. He watched them go up to receive Holy Communion, and he watched what they did. After communion, some, he said, immediately went straight out the door. Others returned to the pews and started to talk to their friends. Many others returned as if nothing really important had just happened. And Dr. Kreeft asked him what he thought their response should have been. And the Muslim said, if I really thought that that little white thing were Allah, I don't think I could ever get up off my knees. Well, we Catholics do believe and know through faith that that little white thing actually is Jesus Christ, God incarnate. How do we respond to this reality? Do we head straight out the door after we receive him as if something or someone more important than God awaits us? Do we head back to the pews as if nothing really life-changing has occurred? Or do we realize that we have just received the greatest gift in the whole world? If we believe that Jesus is God and that the Eucharist is Jesus, then our choices will show it. There are things we should consider in passing the Eucharistic test with regard to our faith in God truly present for us in the Eucharist and determine whether we really believe that the little white thing is God and whether we love him. 
just consider daily mass attendance and Eucharistic adoration. Because if we truly love someone, we want to spend time with them. It's as simple as that. Jesus, out of love for us, has remained with us in the Eucharist under the humble appearances of bread and wine. He is present in the tabernacle of every church. Do we ever come to spend time with him? Even for those who are homebound, you can take advantage as you are now through our Catholic media in participating in Mass in Holy Communion spiritually. For those watching this Mass on TV and can get to church, I encourage you to participate in Holy Mass. I would bet that if Pope Francis were coming to your parish on any given Sunday, the church would be mobbed. We would give up the sports game on TV and watch the highlights later in the day. We'd be calling the parish office to see if we could get tickets for our friends who are in town. We'd leave early to make sure we weren't stuck in traffic. The reality is, is that the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the one who died for you on the cross, is in our churches every day. Can we spend some time with him? One of the more important Eucharistic tests is regarding our receiving the Lord with purity and love, which involves how well we prepare to receive Jesus in the act of Holy Communion. Every time we receive him, we receive God inside. By baptism, we were made temples of God so that we might be fit to receive Jesus within. But just like we have to keep our church buildings clean, so we have to keep our temples clean. And many times we don't. We can dishonor God's sanctuary within through sin. Many Catholics may not realize that we need to be in the state of grace to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. We must be free from mortal sin. And so Jesus gave us the sacrament of confession to cleanse our souls and make ready our hearts and souls to receive Jesus. This Feast of Corpus Christi is a time when God is waiting to pour out his graces upon all of us. He loved us so much that not only did he take on our flesh to give it for us in the upper room and on the cross, but left us this great sacrament so that he could be with us until the end of time. The Eucharist is, yes, a test, but God wants to give us all the help he knows we'll need to pass that test with flying colors. May we respond to this tremendous gift of gifts with great love, making Jesus in the Eucharist the alpha and the omega of our entire existence. When we do, we will experience the joy of what it means to live a truly Christian life. My friends, the little white thing whom I'm about to hold in my hands and give to you in spiritual communion really is God. May we love him with the love he deserves, with the total self-sacrificial love with which he loves us. Amen. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again in the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord God has satisfied our hunger from feeding our forebears in the desert to sending us living bread from heaven. Therefore, we offer our needs to God, trusting that our hunger will be satisfied. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we, though many, may truly be one body as St. Paul envisioned, nourished by the body and blood of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who doubt the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, that their faith may be strengthened and their hearts may be healed through the grace of the sacrament, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Eucharistic revival that is beginning across the country, that those who speak, seek spiritual nourishment will be drawn to the table of the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle in deserts of poverty, of loneliness, or of emotional emptiness, that they may find sustenance and hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we may be a Eucharistic people, giving of ourselves and nourishing those around us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember in prayer this morning Angeline and Sean Loftus Sr., for whom this Mass is being offered, and for the names that will be placed in our Book of Remembrance this day. Let us pray to the Lord. God of infinite generosity, we cry to you in our hunger and you feed us with living bread. We cry to you now in our need, trusting in your lavish kindness. May the body and blood of your Son that we receive here today nourish us and inspire us to give of ourselves to others. Hear this in all our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell. Whom all the world cannot contain Comes in our hearts to dwell You satisfy the hungry heart With gift of finest wheat Come give to us, O saving the bread of life to eat. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. in the name of the Lord. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until Till you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through who him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. 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 Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be here. As we prepare here in this Holy Spirit Chapel to receive Jesus in Holy Communion, I would ask all of you watching on TV now to join me in a prayer as you join us spiritually in Holy Communion from your homes or in hospitals or nursing homes, wherever you're watching this. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we might delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever. On this Feast of Corpus Christi, many of our parishes throughout the diocese will be engaged in Eucharistic processions. Perhaps those of you who are homebound may have the opportunity to peek out your window and see Jesus passing by your home or down the street or around your parish. I'd ask you as we enter into this second phase of the Eucharistic revival in our nation, that you would enter into the activities of your parish that will be uh, presented before you, whether that be a holy hour, whether that be a special mass, whether it be a faith sharing, uh, a teaching of some sort, to participate in not only you, but to bring your neighbors, your friends, who may not be truly uh, on fire with the faith and truly believe that Jesus is present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. We need a true revival in our country. John Paul, the, Pope John Paul II, St. John Paul II said, in that little white host is the answer to all the world's problems. And it truly is. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. journey as we seek purpose and connection. We are called, called to place our faith and trust in something greater than our own understanding. We are called by someone who already loves us and offers himself to us, Jesus Christ, his body given daily, his blood poured out for us. We never journey alone in life. Through the Eucharist, we encounter his real presence and others who share our faith. Together, we become one with him in his very flesh. And when we bring his presence out into the world, we can be light for others. This is the gospel call to make disciples of all nations, laying down our lives for others. The time is now to unite our hearts with his for the life of the world. Thanks, Sharon. My sincere thanks to Father Gary Daly for celebrating our Mass for us today. We wish him a restful summer as he awaits the students returning to the beautiful Newman Center next fall. The Newman Center will also be holding its 10th annual golf tournament on Monday, July 31st at the Springfield Country Club. Proceeds go toward the center and its programs. So register, please contact Jenny Webb at v.webb at dialspringfield.com. Org. I'd like to extend my gratitude to John Loftus and his family members for joining us in our chapel this morning. We're also grateful to Ernie Hadley for sharing his music ministry with us this day. And friends, coming up next Tuesday morning, June 13th at 9 a.m., Sacred Heart Parish Community in Feeding Hills will be marking the Feast of St. Anthony with a mass and distribution of St. Anthony bread. This 
Tradition dates back to the late 1800s as a thank you for the many blessings St. Anthony has bestowed. And again, that's this Tuesday at 9 a.m., the Sacred Heart Parish, 1061 Springfield Street in Feeding Hills. And friends, you should have received your Father's Day Mass of Remembrance mailing. Please, please be sure to put that in the mail first thing tomorrow. If you still like to submit names of your fathers, grandfathers, uncles, or other paternal figures, please call 413-452-0643 to have them added to our remembrance next week. And we ask you to join us again next Sunday at the normal time of 10 a.m. as we welcome Father's Day with our Mass Remembrance and welcome Father Peter Kalik, our Vicar General, as our Mass Presider. He will be joined by a diocesan deacons for this very special celebration. Again, that's next Sunday, back at a normal time of 10 a.m. For the Childless of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. And from all of us here on Childless, sending our love and blessings to you and all those you hold close and dear. See you next Sunday. God bless one and all.